You all have been patiently waiting for this video and I have been patiently waiting to make it because I had others in the lineup that just needed to go first based on whatever crazy schedule of videos is happening in my mind. This is toe curler fragrances. Those fragrances that you smell and they're just so amazing. They do something so special to you. They like move you, your eyes roll in the back of your head, your toes curl, and at least in your mind, you scream out in some sort of olfactory ecstasy. <laughs> and by the way, this is not a sexual video at all. I'm not a fan of, y'all know what I'm talking about. We ain't doing panty droppers and all that foolishness over here. What I'm talking about is these are so amazing the way that they smell, that they just, they immediately like just, put you in some sort of ecstatic Zen experience. <laughs> so I've chosen 10, you know, I've been sticking to about 10 fragrances or so for these types of videos. And I'm going to start off with the ones in the bunch that I think are maybe the most feminine leaning. And then I have a small handful that are unisex, at least in my opinion. And I have one, maybe two that folks might consider to be leaning much more in the masculine direction, but that I still think are absolutely Amaze balls, and with the exception of maybe two, they are all extremely long performers. These are bombastic fragrances that fill up the room. I'll mention which ones are the exceptions. Are y'all ready? I'm ready for this. Woo! And I would welcome you. Don't be stingy with your fragrance recommendations. I know, I know you know a toe curler or two or three or four or five. <laughs> Go ahead and drop that down in the comments so that all of our fragrance friends out here in YouTube land can. Go look and see what they want to either add to their wish list or get decans from, you know, the deal. So let's get rolling. So last year I started to explore the house of LM Parfums and I was looking for, I think it's called Sensual and Decadent because I had gotten a decant of that and loved that decant. Found the fragrance really hard to find, at least here in the States, you'd have to order it from overseas and y'all know how I have had experiences from ordering from overseas. I'll get over it one day and get back to it, but let me have my moment. Let me have my moment with that. And so I picked up Chemise Blanche. I talked about that in a recent video about clean musk fragrances, and I ordered some other samples. And this one in particular not only caught my eye, but when I smelled it, when I sampled it. Oh my goodness. So this is maybe, I don't know, perhaps the most feminine of the bunch. That's all subjective. This is the absolutely gorgeous sensual orchid. Sensual. What's happening in this fragrance is one of like the sweetest without going into super young territory, sweetest candied floral fragrances I think that I have ever tried. Vanilla is one of the primary notes here along with an orchid note. So orchid is a fantasy note, but for me, it's like this almost like a bright candied white floral. If you take away sort of the cloying nature that white florals can have where they get heady, take away the heady aspects and maybe insert the white floral base with a little bit of like cotton candy-esque vibe in the sugary, sweet candy direction on top of that. Not gourmand though, like not edible, but just like the sweet feeling of it. That's kind of what I get from the orchid notes in fragrances. This also has this very sort of dense powderiness and creaminess from a nutty accord. This is, when I smell this, I just, I want to sit back and just stare at a wall and think about how I can make my life better by wearing this every day, every day. It's really, really, really good. I'll say deep in the dry down, I'm talking about like the last phases of the fragrance, you know, later on in the day, that magic of it sort of fades off a little bit, but in the opening and in the mid and into the initial dry down, you still have almost like, I don't even know how to describe the beauty that this is in terms of the floral aspect of it. Oh my God, if I had to give it a color, it would be the color magenta like almost like that purpley, pinky, pinky purple type of color with this gorgeous, sweet vanillic base. It's not sweet in the gourmand direction. Let me just be clear about that. But in terms of being a mostly floral fragrance, the vanilla and the sweetness from the orchid note, I think just make this so feminine, so pretty. It's like the color of this sweater that's sort of like pinky, purpley. It has this, I don't know, this creaminess, just like deep, but not thick. So we're not talking about like heavy butter. <laughs> we're talking about almost like a whipped cream aspect. Kind of like the texture of Love Tuberose from Amouage. If you've tried that, that sort of like wispy whipped cream, uh, almost, yeah, whipped cream, like out of the, out of the, you know, you put on your desserts, that kind of creaminess. Oh my gosh. And this little bit of brightness from citrus. 
the citrus is very faint for me and it sort of just accompanies the sweetness of the orchid and the beauty of the vanilla. I cannot praise this fragrance enough in terms of its pretty toe curling effect. This is the pretty one, the prettiest one probably of this bunch. The most feminine, the most floral and like I said, sweet without being gourmand. It's not an edible sweet. It's a like touch your soul sweet. Oh, oh, to die for. It really just does transport you to some like fantasy garden that doesn't even exist. Like if I had to paint what the garden looked like that this reminds me of, all the flowers in there are different shades of pink, light purples. There's some cream flowers. Maybe there are creamsicles being served in the, <laughs> in the garden. Girls are wearing beautiful floral dresses. Their hair is pinned up or like down in long flowing curls or something. It's sunny. They're having the time of their lives and they're in the height of their femininity. That's it. That is what this is. This is like the height of femininity without being overly mature. I love a good mature floral fragrance. You know I do. I mean, give me all the cloying fragrances. I'm here for them. <laughs> I also love the sort of more young, youthful, like Ariana Grande leaning fragrances. I love those too. This is quintessential femininity squarely in the middle of that. If I had to assign this fragrance a celebrity representative, it would probably be like Zendaya. You know how she's not like, she's not super young. I think, isn't she in her like late twenties or something like that? Very model-esque, statuesque, oozing femininity, oozing presence. Like she can do no wrong. No look looks bad on her. Every outfit looks amazing. She's just glorious in her femininity. Boom, sensual orchid is that. It is that. Let's go on. You've heard so much about this next fragrance. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. And in fact, you're probably going to roll your eyes while I roll my eyes in the back of my head talking about Blanche Bet because you've heard about it so much. But my goodness. So if this is a young, spunky, in her late 20s, maybe mid 20s, I don't know, Zendaya in all of her glorious, edgy femininity, this is the fairy godmother in a long white flowing gown, maybe with the big tutu on the bottom of the gown that goes all the way down to her feet. And she's pleasant and she's comforting. And this is a much more mature, I think, fragrance than sensual orchid. This is for this is for the grown and comforting. I like to say grown and sexy for the <laughs> grown and comforting type of person. And I do associate this with femininity and mostly women wearing it. Although, as I always say, wear whatever you want, whether it's masculine, feminine, whoever, men, women, whatever. Wear what you enjoy. So the fragrance here is mostly creamy. A lot of people pick this up as mostly milky. Okay, so when I think of milky, I think of a thinner consistency like milk. And when I think of creamy, I think more of we're going in the half and half direction or we're going in the full cream direction that you would put in your coffee. I like full cream in my coffee if I'm going to have any cream in my coffee. I usually just drink it black. But I love the consistency of a heavy like whipping cream is what I'm thinking of. For me, this is more like half and half leaning in the heavy whipping cream direction in terms of the creaminess, although other people pick it up as a thinner consistency. There are beautiful white florals running through this fragrance, mostly a tuberose note, and I believe there's some other white florals. Let me take a peek jasmine, mahonial, whatever that is. I don't know what mahonial is. I've looked it up before, but I have forgotten. Vanilla, beautiful tonka beans. So it's like a sweet, creamy, floral fragrance that is so comforting, so round, so thick and enveloping and comforting. This is the eye roll that gives me comfort. So I've talked about musk moshus lately as one of my new favorite musk fragrances that could have been in this video. But the thing about musk most shoes is it's comforting in a I've arrived home kind of way. This is comforting in a blissful kind of way. They're just different types of comforting. This is because of the floral aspects of this that are just so nicely done. It's almost like ice creamy. It's like a floral ice cream. Gosh, this is so good. Some people don't like this. They think it's nauseating. You know, it just doesn't work well on their skin or whatever. I'm very, very sorry for those people. I mourn for those people's experience. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry to hear that because this for me is such a beautiful, glorious, creamy, dreamy. It just, it takes me away. It, this puts me on some ethereal cloud of comforting floral creaminess. I just adore it. It's so beautiful. It smells how the bottle looks. So the bottle has this mostly opaque, 
exterior, if you look very closely on it, there are like crisscrosses on it, right? And you can see through to the fluid that is deepening probably because of the vanilla in it, it's starting to deepen, but that deepening makes me think of like a creaminess. So anyway, I've gone on and on. Oh my God, so beautiful, so beautiful, long lasting, projecting. This works so well on me, love this. You have also heard me rave and rave and rave about this next fragrance and how when I tried it, the edges of the room blurred. I didn't know who else was in the space. I was actually on a webinar, <laughs> a webinar about the fragrance house. And I was listening to the perfumer talk about the vision behind her fragrances. And we had gotten to this fragrance and the sample of it. I sprayed it and I put it on skin. You have to try this on skin. Don't make the mistake of just smelling this on a blotter. It smells divine on a blotter, but it really sort of comes to life and deepens and warms up on your skin in a way that it just doesn't on paper. And I sniffed and I remember thinking that I was in this like solitary space, dancing alone on the dance floor with Pavilion from Andrea Mack. Wowzers. So the fragrance that this reminds me of the most is Oud Bouquet from Maison Lancome, except it's not as overpowering as that fragrance can be. Like if you think about that fragrance sort of dialed down rather than up, like that's the dialed up version of things. This is dialed down and sweetened out and rounded out by some other notes that give this an, an even more interesting profile than Oud Bouquet, if you can believe that. So there is rose in the fragrance that comes across really sort of thick and sweet to me, like fresh, thick, and sweet. And then you get almost like this candied sweetness from praline. There's a beautiful, soft, thinner honey. There are some really thick honeys like Ellis Brooklyn Bee, like Zoologist Bee. Those are some thick honeys. The honey that's in Jury from Kajal, that is a thick honey. This is a background honey for me. And this very sort of soft, elegant, really comforting, regal even. Comforting and regal. Can you imagine those two things together? Have you ever had a leader, a, a team leader, a boss, something like that, maybe an older family member who was so secure in who they are and they treated everyone super kindly, like they were stately, they had presence, people paid attention to them when they spoke, people listened, but they spoke softly. This is what the oud is like in here. It speaks softly, but it has such a beautiful presence alongside the sweetness, this gorgeous vanilla that kind of wraps around the fragrance the rose, the honey, the saffron, they just play so well together. Very, very mature fragrance, even exotic, I would say. And perhaps people would classify this as strictly an evening or special occasion type of fragrance. And I can totally see that with this scent profile for sure, for sure. However, you know, I wear it whenever, including during the day. It is absolutely divine to me. I can't get enough of this fragrance. It's the kind of fragrance that you know, I have a big collection, so I try to rotate through and wear a different fragrance each day to the extent that I can, right? So that means that a fragrance, I may not get to wear it again for many months if I follow sort of that pattern. But this is a fragrance that I love to come by and sniff and spritz and kind of cheat on the rest of the collection with. I cheat on the rest of the collection with this one, actually all of the ones in here. Maybe this one especially, maybe this one especially. This is, this has a very, very special place in my heart. Absolutely divine. Not for everyone. I think some people would find this overbearing, overwhelming. So do sample it. I will have everything linked below. Okay. And you can check out those links and shop through those if you would like. They are either affiliate or commissionable links. And then there are some that are just not. And then there are some places that you can get samples. Like I think you can get samples of this on Twisted Lily and So Avant Garde. And those are linked below as well. And you can use my discount codes to get some percentage off. But oh, Oh my God. Wow. I immediately loved this fragrance when I tried it and I was so thrilled, so thrilled at what it gave me, especially as we're moving into spring and summer here. This is from Zerzhov and this is Herba Gold, which is, we think of Flanker to Herba Pora. Friends, the beautiful melon nature of this fragrance combined with citrus and musk, little tiny hints of spice, a little bit of amber, you know what this reminds me of? I just realized this today as, as I was uh, testing it again for this video. Maybe I've said this before and have forgotten, <laughs> but it reminds me of like a cousin of Dolce Amalfi, also from Zerzhov. Did I say that before? I feel like I've said that before now that I think about it. 
Regardless, they could be kissing cousins, except this is very heavy on the melon direction, whereas that one is more spicy in the juicy fruit direction. This reminds me of a fruit bowl, a freshly created fruit bowl for summer with the melons in it, like honeydew and cantaloupe and maybe even some strawberry, those sort of fresh, sweet, watery melons um, that you would put in a fruit salad. Oh my gosh, so, so good, so fresh, so uplifting. Now that I'm sniffing it on the blotter, I'm even getting like a very slight hint of like a bubblegum type of a chord deep in the background. There's some nice citrus in here, musk, like I said. The musk for me in this is the foundation of the fragrance, but it doesn't take over the fragrance like it can in Herba Pura. So I don't have that fragrance, but I have smelled it before and I have a really beautiful dupe of it from Al Haramain. Amber Oud Gold, I believe is the name of that fragrance, which is, it's beautiful. I love that too. But a lot of people find the musk and Herba Pura to be overwhelming and maybe even a little screechy, scratchy, kind of like take over the room and don't let anybody else play kind of a thing. <laughs> this one, the musk is more toned down and softer and just more gentle and allows those melon fruits and a little bit of citrus to shine through. Like I said, accompanied by this slight bit of spiciness. This is absolutely beautiful, super long lasting, crowd pleasing, fresh, fun, fruity musk for spring and summer all year round. I mean, this would be fantastic in cold weather too, because it holds its own due to its density, thickness, long lastingness. Uh, and I can't see it being cloying in the summer unless, you know, you're in like super hot hundred degree weather. Maybe it just will get a little, I don't know, a little bit much in that ridiculously hot weather. But anything under that, like all the way up into the 80s, maybe even low 90s, we can do it. We can hang. Let's try this out. <laughs> but this is, this one, I smell it and I go, oh my God, toes curl, eyes roll in the back of my head. Beautiful fragrance. Beautiful. Uh, so we're getting more into unisex territory. I think a lot of folks would find this next one feminine, but I do declare, I do declare that I feel like it could easily be pulled off in a unisex fashion. Although if you like feminine fragrances, this will work for you too. This, as we get deeper into late spring and early summer, if you don't have a bottle of this, or if you haven't at least tried it, get yourself a decant. I will link where you can purchase the fragrance as well as a decant. Okay, in fact, I might try to do that for all of these because these are mostly on the pricey end. And I know some of you, understandably so, would like to try before you buy when it gets to a certain price point and or you're just not willing to spend that kind of coin and you rather just sample and enjoy from the decant period. And that's totally fine too. So I'll see if I can link both without it getting sort of too messy in the description box. But anyway, this is from Simone Andrioli and this is Leisure in Paradise. Holy moly. When I smelled this, it was like the skies parted. No, the clouds parted, the skies parted. What is that? Like Armageddon or something? The cloud. <laughs> The clouds parted and I was like, oh, the angels, the tropical angels came down. You know what this reminds me of? I just came back from a Disney trip. <laughs> Have you written It's a Small World in Disney? You know, when you get to the tropical section, it's like the South Pacific section and they've got the hula girls doing this, the little animatronics. That's what this reminds me of. Like you have arrived in paradise, my friends. This is such a glorious, creamy, juicy, juicy coconut, vanilla, pineapple, papaya. I say I get mostly the coconut and the vanilla aspects of this. And for me, the that like papaya, pineapple, and whatever other tropical fruits are in here are softer for me. I get the sweet coconut, uh, vanilla aspects of it with like a brightness added from those fruits. And I'm going to tell you this. Listen to me, listen to me, because I just realized this. This is the tropical cousin of Central Orchid. Prove me wrong. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You don't have to prove anything. But I wonder how these two would layer together. So if this is more in that garden direction because of that pinky sort of purpley smelling, beautiful, sweet, candied white floral, this is the tropical cousin with those tropical fruits, like the sweet tropical fruit drink smell think about that except mostly creamy and coconut like a, a a pina colada that's more heavy on the coconut cream aspect of it than it is on like the pineapple pieces and all of that but these might let me let me try this hang on y'all hang on give me a second give me a second pause wait a minute wait a minute yeah yeah i'm telling you i'm telling you I, i'm not a big layering person boom these two together mind blown like 
alone, this is mind blowing. These two together are like, you better get out of my way. Stop playing with me. <laughs> Stop playing with me. Oh, so I want to say this about Leisure in Paradise. Some do not feel like this lasts long. Lasts long. I feel like it has moderate longevity. It has decent projection, but it isn't an all-day fragrance. So some do get all day. Some get just like an hour or two and then it goes away. I feel like it's, I'm somewhere in the middle with this one. But hands down, one of my favorite, favorite tropical fragrances. You will hear about this again for sure. I'm kind of cheating a little bit with the next two because it's the same perfumer. <laughs> it's the same perfumer. Okay. And there are some similarities between them, even though when you look at the note structures, they're actually quite different fragrances, but they give off the same feeling. So forgive me, but I love these both. And they really are both toe curlers, not just for me in terms of like that woo -woo -woo kind of feeling. Can I, can I pause for a second? What do you think about like what image comes to mind when you think about toe curlers? For me, I think about the movie Boomerang. <laughs> do you remember that movie? I think it was like eight late 80s early 90s movie with eddie murphy and is it angela bassett in the movie and they get it on and then her toes curl well that is a sexual reference and i don't mean it in that way but that's what comes to mind like Woo, something so amazing that your, your toes curl anyway let's get on with these two fragrances this one is called Syrah, and i have talked about how my husband is like absolutely enamored with this fragrance he chases me around when i wear it and this also has the same effect on me of like wow i smell absolutely amazing so this fragrance and the next fragrance have passion fruit in common which is like a thing in a lot of not a lot but a number of tiziano terenzi fragrances so it's that sort of deep syrupy sticky sweet fruitiness that you get out of passion fruit if you've had that as a, as a fruit. Here in Syrah, there's a good dose of saffron that keeps this fragrance feeling almost like light and, and leathery, but in a, a really sort of hovering way, like light in the air, in the atmosphere, not a thick, heavy leather. Okay. Cause when you think of leather, you tend to think of like an earthiness grounding. I don't, I don't feel like this fragrance is like a grounded fragrance, even though it's a heavy fragrance. I feel like there's some edges of it that have wings and cloudiness and wispiness to it. And saffron can do that in fragrances sometimes. There's rose in the fragrance. There's a very sort of clean, crisp woodiness in the background and a little bit of muskiness. So it's a hard to describe fragrance because I can't tell you that it smells like anything else. You would almost have to like mix certain fragrances up, like maybe some aspects of some leathery fragrance like saffron lazuli, if you tried that from Carolina Herrera, with Cassiopeia, like if you smush those together and added a sprinkle of saffron on top of that, maybe it'll give you something like Syrah. It is thick, but light in terms of the density of it. Thick in terms of the notes feel substantial, strong. It's a very strong fragrance, very projecting, very long lasting, fills up a room. And it's really hard to describe, except it's super sexy incredibly unisex although i think the florals and fruit do give it some feminine aspects to it and it doesn't sit like on ground level i feel like this is up a story or two in the house in terms of like it being able to float like if it had some balloons from the saffron that helped it uh, feel a little bit lighter in terms of i don't know the way it presents in a room it's not like that bomb of a fragrance where someone comes in this is a heavy fragrance but you won't go like whoa that is too much unless you overspray then any fragrance can really be too much. If you spray appropriately with this, it will make its way around the room. It has legs and tentacles that will touch people in different corners without attacking them. I don't know how to describe that, but this is, oh my God, magnificent. I love to smell it. I love to wear it. I love the reaction of other people when I wear this fragrance. Then we go over to Quinto Canto, and this is Temptatio. Temptatio, someone told me it's Temptatio with a Z, even though it's a T-I-O, whatever. The name is on the screen. You know what I'm talking about. And of course, it'll be linked below. These bottles, I mentioned the one thing I do not appreciate is sometimes these plates come off of the bottle, like the glue loosens. And for this price point, if you buy this retail, I think it's $500 or over. And that discounts codes for you. And I'll try to find a more inexpensive version to link below also. This fragrance is a lot like Syrah in terms of the way that it presents in a room. This one, Temptasio, Temptasio, doesn't have that like airy saffron aspect to it. It has more of the juiciness from the fruits, like that passion fruit. There are some citruses in here. There's a lemon and orange in the fragrance. 
that for me give it like this fruity sweetness rather than like a sourness or that like tartness that you can get from citrus sometimes. It doesn't smell like that. This presents almost like it has a, sh a slight sugary accord in it. And then in the middle, it has all of these interesting notes, including peach, passion fruit, little iris. In the base, I'm mostly picking up that vanilla, tonka bean, sandalwood type of combination. There's patchouli, but I can't say that I smell patchouli in the fragrance. It's sandalwood, it's creamy, it's fruity. It's like a deep, deep, sweet fruitiness in here alongside that like sugary, almost like sugared citrus. In fact, maybe this should be more in the feminine territory, although I do think it can present as unisex. So maybe I should have put this one, Syrah, behind this one because this is even more unisex, maybe with a little bit of a couple of masculine touches. Now that I'm sniffing this more, it's really more, you know, I like to compare fragrances sometimes. This is like a deeper, sultrier, more out to the club, <laughs> partying all night version of Herbapura even, okay? Like if this one twisted in a booth like Wonder Woman does and comes out with this like nighttime persona on, like whew, it's cape and it's ready for some nighttime trouble, Temptatio would be that. <laughs> <laughs> beautiful so these fragrances are similar except that this is more fruity sweet this is more saffron airy and fruity and has that touch of like leatheriness to it oh so beautiful all of these y'all <sighs> then for this next fragrance let me tell you something it's the way that this presents in the air so if you sampled it you might like it but it's one of those things where you need to sample it if you remember in a video a while back i said spray a piece of clothing and then leave that piece of clothing in another room. Come back 30 minutes later and stand over the piece of clothing and see what the fragrance is giving you. This one really, really delivers in terms of that like in the air magnificence. It's very pricey, but look, so, 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 so are a lot of these. They're all pricey. People complain about these prices in particular, <laughs> maybe because we haven't found them on like discount sites yet. And this is from Mind Games French Defense. Oh my goodness. So this almost rivals Lost Cherry as my best cherry fragrance, but Lost Cherry still has the crown. It still has the crown, but this one, so if Lost Cherry has the queen's crown, this one has the king's crown, okay? They can be side by side, but we all know the queen really runs the show, the Lost Cherry. No offense to my, my male viewers out there. This is cherry and amber mostly. That's what's playing for me in the air. A nice, soft, sweet cherry. I don't get that medicinal cough medicine vibe that some people get with cherry fragrances. No, ma'am. No, sir. None of that. This is a beautiful, soft, sweet cherry on a bed of this really sort of like decadent yet well-mannered amber, you know, because amber can be a little bit cloying sometimes if it's too heavy in a fragrance. It can really overtake a fragrance. I feel like the amber here is a very well-behaved gentleman who, this is an equestrian amber. <laughs> You know how we tend to think of equestrian society, <laughs> people who ride horses as being very upper crust. I know a lot of equestrians and they would cringe if they heard me say that. I don't mean it like that. I'm just joking with y'all. You got a sense of humor, right? Okay. I just, I love this. And there's a woodiness in the base. So the notes say there's cedar wood and blonde wood. I pick up mostly amber and a little bit of woodiness. There are other notes. So there's chamomile and violet leaves and geranium and rose absolute and mimosa but for me the primary players are that nice sweet soft cherry and the equestrian amber <laughs> with a little bit of that woodiness accompanying it i this is a toe curler this is one where i sniff and i just go oh my goodness that is such a good fragrance it it gives you pause you know it makes you just stop like the world stops and you're like whoa that's really good not everybody feels that way. Some people have not enjoyed French defense, but I do know a lot of people agree with me and think that this, this is a fabuloso, fabuloso fragrance. Whew, so beautiful. Layers nicely with other amber fragrances, layers nicely with woody fragrances. If you are a layering type, I think this is beautiful on its own. I layered it with something a while back that was amazing and I don't even remember what the heck it was, but yeah. You can layer it with other cherry fragrances or other fruity fragrances to see how they play together. In fact, I wonder how this would play alongside Jadobe from the same line, Mind Games. That's a nice, I think it's a fruity floral if I remember. But anyway, I'd love to layer those together. But 
this is a very, very special cherry fragrance to me. So when I tell you that something needs to be tested on skin, this next fragrance is an example of that. It smells so okay. Like on paper, when you put it on the blotter, you're like, all right, that's, that's okay. You have to put this on your skin, let it warm up, give it 30 minutes and even an hour. When my husband puts this on, it's on his shelf. So this, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. This is considered to me, unisex leaning into masculine territory. It's on my husband's shelf, but I love it too. When he wears it, I'm having a moment. I'm like, you smell absolutely divine, like showstopper, showstopper, head turner, compliment getter, all of the things. And this is stupid pricey. I'm so sorry. If I see it on sale, I'll link it below. It's Blonde Amber from Clive Christian, Blonde Amber. So I mentioned when I did the haul video with this that it was Evelyn at the Ev Effect that put me on to this fragrance because she raved about it and I enjoy her tastes. And I purchased this in the last So Avant Garde sale that I did with them. So I did get 30% off of this and that was worth it to me. However, I will say that if you don't mind spending a little coin, because some of you do mind and then others of you don't, you're fine. If it's beautiful, you're okay spending the money. This is one that I really, really think is worth the full, the full asking price of this, the full retail price. But of course, you know what I say, get it on sale, get yourself a discount code if you can, always. Oh my goodness. There is such a warm, deep fall, winter smell to this fragrance. It is boozy. It has some sweet dried fruits in it. Rum is the boozy note in here. It has tonka in it. Not just tonka, sumptuous tonka, it says. <gasps> like sexual chocolate. You got sumptuous tonka in the fragrance. It's just so deep and warm and enveloping and rich. It's like a very, and I mean rich in terms of like how like a dessert is rich in taste. This is rich as a fragrance. It's decadent, like a decadent dessert of a masculine leaning fragrance. Holy cow. Holy cow. It's like soaked, like cake soaked in rum. Like imagine a woody, tonka-y, <gasps> fruity cake soaked in rum. Holy cow. This is beautiful. A spray or two on my husband all day long. I can smell him. In fact, He'll get ready and he'll leave the bedroom. I'll walk into the bedroom after he's gone. And I'm like, oh my God, he's wearing blonde amber. I gotta find him. I gotta sniff his chest. And I'm like snuggled up into his chest. This is so beautiful. And I think it wears well on ladies too. When I have tested this on myself, I've been very, very impressed with the way that this warms up on the skin and comes across. And I just can't say enough good things about this little bottle of magic. Magic, toe curling, eyes rolled in the back of your head, time stops magic. Did I mention there's tobacco in the fragrance? Let me read y'all some of the notes before I forget because I'm so like enamored. Sparkling pink pepper. I don't know that I pick up pink pepper. A little orange, maybe rum. Absolutely. Bold blonde tobacco. Yes, I get sort of this tobacco-y nuance to it. Tuberose, maybe. Sweet dried fruit. Yes, I get this like nice, I don't know, this beautiful sweetness without being feminine. It's like a very unisex to masculine leaning sweetness. A sumptuous tonka. Vetiver. I can't pick, say I pick up vetiver and then myrrh. Yeah, maybe the myrrh. Oh my God. Just try this on skin. Do yourself in the world a favor. And especially if you're a male, do everyone in your life a favor and either get this, get a little decamp, whatever you need to do. <laughs> try this out. So the ultimate toe curler, especially when it comes to my husband, although I like this too, and I have spritzed this on myself too, and would not hesitate to wear this in warmer weather. Fan your flames X. When I tell you that this man spritzes this on and I'm like, let's just cancel work. Let's cancel work and hang out in the bedroom. <laughs> bedroom. Sorry, I know that's so cringy, but that's what I mean. This is the sexiest fragrance in his collection right now. And he has some stunners in there. He's got blonde amber. I always want to say amber blonde. Blonde amber. He has sandal ruby. He has some of the scents of wood. He has some of that Prada special line, like moonlight, whatever the heck it's called, fig. He has ombre leather. He has some beauties in his collection that I find absolutely fantastic on him. This one here is for me, for my taste, the sexiest of the bunch. 
the sexiest. So I do want to share some of the notes straight from the So Avant Garde website for this one. Coconut and rum. There's another note in the top that I don't recognize and I can't comment on that. I do get coconut, like it's like a sultry, deep, masculine coconut. And I do get a booziness from this fragrance. Tobacco and tonka bean in the mid, thyme oil and carrot. Interesting combination. I will say this gets sultry and deep and very like into fall and winter territory, sort of as it starts to dry down, but with that summery edge from the coconut. And in the base, cedar, oak moss, and patchouli. I will say the patchouli is very faint in here. I do get a pretty decent dose of cedar, especially on paper, but on my husband, I can speak to that. For him, that tonka bean, tobacco, coconut rum piece pushes forward the most. And it's just like a sensual, sexy, sexy showstopper. Just, it captures me. It stops me in my tracks. This smells good on me too. It smells even better on him. I think men and their chemistry will probably pull this off even better than women will. I mean, it would smell great on me as well. He can wear this all year round. I would wear this in the fall and in the winter and just adore this. I adore this. It is so, so good. Totally makes me not just roll my eyes in the back of my head, but close my eyes and fantasize. <laughs> Oh my friends, I hope that you have enjoyed this video. You know, this is all in good fun. I do feel this way about these fragrances, but think about fragrance videos as entertaining and inspiration for fragrances that you may want to try out. I'm not telling you to run out and buy all these fragrances, but if you have tastes like mine, you know, it's worth checking these out. And if you're an adventurous blind buyer, you might really enjoy some of these. So anyhow, do with that what you will. Thanks so much for hanging out with me. Don't you dare forget to leave your toe curler fragrances in the comments below and tell us if it's feminine leaning, masculine or unisex so that our audience can take a look and see what they want to add to their list too. Thanks so much for having some fun with me today. Y'all take care and I'll see you in the next one.